India becoming the world's most populous nation means its role in the global economy and politics will be strengthened. Add in the population of India is much younger than China and the United States. And now you have a very attractive key player for world leaders. However, is the nation heading in a way for others to follow or try to fix? I sat down with former Congressman Trent Franks to discuss. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his ruling BJP party are quickly being labeled as a dominant authoritarian, meaning the administration uses a strong central power to keep the status quo while reducing the rule of law, separation of powers and democratic voting. Experts say the BJP party has weakened institutions meant to keep the state both transparent and accountable by censoring information and suppressing the voice of the people. The purpose of government is to protect the basic rights of all of us. And we recognize that if we're, we've got two ways to go here, uh, we can do the real rule of men or the rule of, you know, human beings like they did in the days of the queens and, and kings, you know, where they had absolute power, authority, uh, and, but that was, that was just, again, the survival of the fittest. That's what it's really predicated on. Or the rule of law. And the rule of law says that the senator and the janitor are equal in the sight of the law. That as long as you're not doing anything to hurt people or hurt others or take other people's rights, you have all the freedom that you can possibly desire. But when you start to take other people's rights or other people's freedom, that's where the line is. That line can be seen in India's current economy. Italian automaker Lamborghini recorded record sales in India last year, with growth up from the previous year by 33%. And in mid-February of this year, the company announced it had already sold out for the number of cars to be delivered to India. Vehicles, keep in mind, that have a price tag of $500,000 and up. Meantime, 350 million Indians are reported as food insecure. That's up from 190 million in 2018. Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party also failed to create jobs over the past decade, as reports show zero net new jobs, even as the labor force went up by more than 100 million people. The BJP is also choosing to tax lower income people to pay for public services like health and education, rather than taxing the top 10 percent. And the world's largest minority group of roughly 200 million Muslims say they're labeled as second class citizens in India, extending poor race relations between Hindus and Muslims that peaked in 1980 sparking riots. Muslims and police clashed in November of that year, ending in hundreds of people dying. Former Congressman Franks saw the aftermath firsthand. I was there shortly after the Naroda Pachya massacre that took place in, in Gujarat. And that was a tragedy beyond description. I know people on both sides died, and I know there was a lot of, you know, internecine war there that was uh, based on religious ideals. But the truth is that, the, 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 in that case, the Muslim population was terribly mistreated. From the 1980 riot, the government recognized 400 deaths, while the unofficial tally is closer to 3,000. Murad Abid has a long history of Hindu-Muslim riots dating back to 1848. For more in-depth stories, log on to satlujnetwork.com. I'm Ginger Jeffries. Thank you for watching. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Break the cycle. Be informed. Satluj Network. Let the truth flow.